Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled Skyhook One. This is a story about a man, a machine, and a job. The man, Warrant Officer Bill Wester. The machine, an Army H-19 helicopter. The job, finding out what helicopters can do. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, with men who know the Army, it's the job you do that counts. Take the yard brakeman, the dental technician, the petroleum chemist, or the weather observer. They're all soldiers like me, and they're all doing a wonderful job of making the United States Army the world's best. Why not make use of your skills in the Army? There's a job for every specialist and technician, and a need for his special skills, and a satisfying career for you with those special skills. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station real soon, and learn about the benefits you can have when you enlist in the United States Army. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production... Skyhook One. To begin, we must go back a little more than three years to March 1951. At Hutchison Field, Kansas, Master Sergeant Bill Wester, in charge of the maintenance and flight records of five units of National Guard liaison planes, knew an opportunity when he saw one. In the Army, nearly 10 years, a former liaison pilot with nearly 2,000 hours flying time, Bill Wester only had to read the directive on the requirements for helicopter training once to know he was on his way. What are you grinning about? You read this thing? You mean on helicopter training? That's what I mean. So? So, the sooner I put in for transfer, the sooner I'll be driving a helicopter. Hey, you don't know when you're well off, do you, Bill? <laughs> Why don't you retire, Matt? Ah, oh, what do you want to fly one of them things for? Got a nice, soft job keeping these puddle jumpers flying. Why do you want to go off and risk your neck? Helicopter's not an aircraft. It's a thing. They're going to play a big part in any man's army. Don't you forget it. Who told you? Oh, I've read a couple of articles on them. Looks like the cross between a bee and a sewing machine. <laughs> Once I've learned how to fly one, I'll come back and give you a ride. Now, suppose you don't make the grade. Where'll you be then? Right where I am now, in my Uncle Samuel's army. But I'll let you in on a secret for ears only. I'm going to make the grade. Now lend me your pen. The Army's first helicopter class took its training at Fort Sill, Oklahoma. There were 32 men in that first class, and one of them was Bill Wester. The prescribed course called for 90 hours of flight time, 35 dual, and the remainder solo. Ground school subjects consisted of helicopter maintenance, aerodynamics, meteorology, and navigation. The training ship used was the two-place Army H-13, which was being employed extensively in Korea for evacuation work. And now the toughest job you men are going to have is forgetting the habit you formed of flying conventional aircraft. The more time you've had, the harder it will probably be. Try to fix it in your heads right now that the only similarity between the operation of a helicopter and any plane you've been in is that they both fly. Now, for example, in a conventional aircraft, how do you correct for torque? All right, you. Uh, with rudder, sir. Right. Torque control on this baby is on the throttle. Instead of one stick, you'll notice there are two. This one we call the pitch stick. This, the cyclic. Pitch for the rotor blades, cyclic for the rotor disc, and pedals for the small rotor on the tail. All right, I'm of the old school. I figure the only way to learn how to fly is to get in and fly. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sergeant Wester, guess your last man up. You learn anything from what you've been watching? No, sir. Don't figure I'll start learning till I get inside it. <laughs> well, I think that about sums it up. We'll climb aboard. Stick back, figuring the nose will come up, and we start going backwards. It's sure going to take some getting used to, Jim. Yeah, you got to be flying it every minute, that's for sure. <laughs> I could use a couple of extra arms. Where are you going in such a hurry? You got a date? Yeah, my wife's arriving tonight. Why, my, a married man. Thoroughly. Got two kids to prove it. Have you got a place for them to stay? The hotel, till Billy can find something. Billy? Well, you mean her name's the same as yours? That's right. Only she's a sight prettier. <laughs> I should hope so. <laughs> Say, how does your wife feel about your getting into this business? <laughs> I can tell you've never been married. Billy feels about this helicopter business the way I do. It's a new thing. It's big, and it's going to grow. We want to grow along with it. See you later, and uh, don't take any wooden pitch sticks. <laughs> Well, Esther, how'd you like to take this thing out by yourself? I'll try not to dent it too much, sir. Now, watch the weather veining. Okay, take her up, fly her around the field, and bring her back down here. What are you smiling about? I was thinking of the first time I soloed, sir. A little different this time. A little different flying machine. Yeah, I'd better remember that. Well, we'll be standing here watching. Good luck. Thanks, sir. Well, as they say in my hometown, tomorrow's the day they give babies away with a half a pound of tea. That's sure enough the way it looks, honey. How long have we been at this business? Almost seven months. Seven months and 90 hours flying time. Seems like yesterday we got here. And tomorrow they can pin those ever-loving wings on us and... Then what? I kind of got an idea they'll keep us busy. You know, honey, you've been wearing those stripes so long, I don't know if I'll recognize you without them. Uh, he can pin a rose in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> From stripes to warrant officer's bars and one twist of the rotor blade. Hey, Bill, no kidding. Where do you think they'll send us? Well, uh, if you promise not to tell anyone, I got it directly from the horse's mouth. Uh, which horse? You know so many. A third on the left. <laughs> We're taking the first flight of helicopters to the moon. You don't say. I do. Well, I say let's dance. That next day was a big one for Bill Wester, his buddy Jim Abbott, and the other members of their class. As a matter of fact, it was a big day for the United States Army because for the first time in its history, it had graduated a class of cargo helicopter pilots. Well, how do you feel, Mr. Abbott? Ready to ship out? Ready to go, Mr. Wester, but I sure wish I knew where. I told you, the moon, the moon, Mr. Abbott. Yeah, I'll bet. You know, I feel like I've been launched. The only way you can be launched is to be in the Navy. Well, then maybe I've been dedicated. <laughs> if you're not careful, you'll be bucking for general. You're a warrant officer, you're a hot helicopter pilot, and you're... All right, gentlemen. At ease. Congratulations to all of you. Ah, then these are our orders. We leave for Camp Drum tomorrow. We'll be taking part in cold weather maneuvers, and boys, it's going to be plenty cold. We're, uh... Pretty much of an experiment. We're the first cargo helicopter company this Army has ever had, and we've got to prove we're worth our salt, and then some. Now then, any questions? Yes? Uh, will we be using the Army H-19 cargo helicopter? You dream too much, boy. <laughs> no, I'm afraid we won't, gentlemen. We'll be getting them soon, I hope, but for now, it's the H-13 recon type. We'll have ten of them. And we'll have to simulate that they're cargo carriers and not puddle jumpers. Yes? How are they going to use us? In any and every way they can. Our primary mission will be one of supply, men and material. Naturally, we'll evacuate wounded, and we'll also be used for reconnaissance. We'll be learning a lot from this taffy pull, and in case you haven't guessed, we're on the spot. So let's all do the job I know we can do. <laughs> You know, you weren't so far off. What do you mean? You said we were going to the moon. I bet it isn't any colder, any bleaker looking up there. Not so many trees either. Keep your eyes peeled. They should be dug in near here. 
How can you see anything in this snow? I can't. That's why I want you to keep looking. Isn't that ridge line the one marked on the map? You see the brook there below it and, and the way it humps around the edge? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I don't see anyone. I'll go lower. You go much lower. We'll be traveling underground. Those, hey, over there. They're dug in on the edge of those trees. You see them waving? Okay, boys. Here comes your ammo. You guys better hold up with us till this thing blows itself out. I'd like to, Captain, but we can't. Still enough visibility for us to get back, and if we turn the old girl off here, we won't get her fired up till spring. Cold really bothers you guys, too, huh? We have our little problems. Well, I'll tell you this. Nothing on foot or on wheels could have gotten through to us. If you birds hadn't brought up ammo, we'd have had to give up this high ground. We are indeed a wonderful invention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too bad we have to simulate all this. Once we got the H-19, we'll really be bringing the mail up. When's that gonna be? A fine question, Captain. Now we better hightail it out of here. This thing's getting mean. I can't see a thing. It says you can't fly one of these on instruments. All right, we'll get out and walk. Watch that altimeter. It's dark. How are we ever gonna find home plate? Dead reckoning? You can say that again. There's the road. Follow it. We'll be okay. Road? I don't see any road. Oh, brother. A mixture. We're freezing up. Carburetor heater's on full. What? Uh oh. Set me down gently, brother. I'll try. Get ready to pick the bark out of your teeth. Don't haul her up too soon. Can't see much. Now, Bill, now. Ah. Nice landing. I didn't land it. The earth just came up and got us. <sighs> now what? The road's close by. One of us will go get help. The other stays. I'll flip you for it. All the same. One of us stays here and freezes. The other walks and freezes. Call. Now, the experience that Wester and Abbott had, although it was a bit rough on them, <laughs> is just one more thing we're learning up here. We know why she froze up. It's up to the boys who make them to figure out how they can build them so they won't freeze up. But one thing's for sure. Despite the fact that our maintenance is slower because of the cold, we certainly proved our worth in these exercises. We're not expendable. We're dependable. Yes, what are we going to Korea? <laughs> <laughs> Hank, you may quote me as saying one day. That's one day. Right now, we've got a little job ahead of us. Maneuvers are over tomorrow. We'll be on our way back to Sill. When we get there, we'll start getting ready for maneuvers in Texas. Oh, oh my Longhorn <laughs> back. <laughs> Whoever said Longhorn is right. That's what they're calling it. Operation Longhorn. After Camp Drum came Longhorn. And after Longhorn came Fort Bragg and a much-awaited day. The company, which was made up of 28 warrant officer pilots, three platoon officers and the CO, got what they'd been looking forward to for so long. Well, there they are, boys. 21 of them. They're all ours. Oh, look at those sweethearts. Real sure enough H-19 cargo helicopters. Real sure enough H-19s, the long-awaited cargo helicopter capable of carrying a thousand pounds of most anything. This was the baby that could do the job. She handles like a dream. Enough room back there to build a house. Here, you take her. You know where we're going to take her? I got a fairly good idea, but who told you? Didn't I ever tell you I'm an underground agent for the Irish Navy? Oh, this baby's a real baby. Yeah, just don't try to slow roll it surprise me if she could. When do you think we'll be shipping out? As our noble CO says, one day, boy, one day. Well, if they can use us anywhere, they can use us over there. I shall now execute an abbot to the rear march. We shall fly to Korea backwards and confound everyone. <laughs> Your 
You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Skyhook One. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in your United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let me speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young man, you're needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in your United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. You are urged to visit your local United States Army recruiting station today and enlist in the United States Army. The need is urgent. Do it today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Skyhook One. Hiya, honey. Kids going to bed? I tried to keep them up, but they had an awfully big day today. What kept you so long? The CO was checking us all out on the new machines. You're going. Looks that way. Better go in and wash up. I saved supper for you. Can you tell me where you're going? Not yet. You think we could come along with you? I'm going to try. There's a long waiting list. I don't mind waiting, Bill. I know it's foolish to ask you not to worry, honey, but remember we're on the right side, and whatever we do is done with that in mind. Okay? Okay. How long before you go? At least a month. Better not mention it to the kids until the last week. They might get too excited. Now, uh, what'd you say about supper? I'm starved. You'd better be. I've got a steak the size of a rotor blade. A going away present? I'll remember it. It was shortly after the first of the year that Warrant Officer Bill Wester and the rest of the company arrived in Korea. Korea, with its jagged, tortuous mountains, its screaming, ice-laden winds, its gray, foreboding aspect. Korea where our job had to be done. Yeah, we got you. Have it up there as soon as we can get it loaded. Right? Right. Hank, coal supply. Give him this list. Okay. Have him load up 61 and 62 on the double. Right. Bill, Jim, Doc, Fred, gather around. A company's dug in along this ridge, right here. Now, they're expecting trouble. Probably take you three trips to give them all they need in reserve. There are CPs right here, just on the other side of the ridge. You set your stuff down there, Okay. Okay, take off. Be careful. Abel Fox, over. That looks like it just ahead. Yeah, no point sticking our heads over the top of that ridge line. Somebody might try and knock them off. One good thing about this place, it's got a lot of valleys. Must be their CP Doefoot out there signaling. Can you see Doc and Fred? Yeah, behind and to the right. Okay, let's set her down. That's what I call special delivery service. Anderson, get your men on it. Get that stuff unloaded. We got more coming. Good. I think we're going to need it. How come they're concentrating on you? High point. We overlook part of their line. They don't like what we're doing to it. You need any men, holler. We'll bring them up, too. Boy, you characters are just what the doctor ordered. What till the captain sees this? Where'd he go? He's up there having a look. Come on, Jim. Let's help get this stuff off. We've got a lot more to bring up. He's all set, Hank. Okay, take her away. Hey, Wester, wait a minute. Hold it. I just got word. A company's under heavy artillery attack. Be awfully careful where you sit down. Don't get it too close. Do the best we can. unload ourselves, Jim. Looks like they got everybody up there. Okay, where do we put it? That hut. Here come Doc and Fred. Well, wave them over. I think they are. Go! I have a suggestion to make. So have I. On the double. On the double. 
The boys of Helicopter Company found themselves moving on the double everywhere. Helicopters aren't equipped to fly on instruments, but they fly in all kinds of weather. And in between times, they worked like beavers to keep as many of those ships flying as they could. Then came the real test. They had brought supplies to companies, battalions, even regiments. But now, with the bridges out across the Imjin River, they were given the biggest job of all. We've got a little job, men. We're going to completely resupply the 25th Division. The roads are impassable, bridges out, no room for transports to set down, so we're elected. Hank, how many we got in flying shape? Sixteen. We'll figure one pilot per ship, and that leaves a 16-man reserve to get the other five in shape. I'll set up a schedule. We'll be flying the stuff in from base supply. Questions? Yes. When do we start? Ten minutes ago. <laughs> it's going to be big. It's going to be rugged. We can do it. Never before in the history of warfare had an operation such as this been attempted. They called it Skyhook One. A whole division looked to a company of helicopter pilots. They brought in ammo. They brought in food. They brought in clothing, medical supplies. Everything and anything that the 25th Division needed. It was a real job of work. Oh, what day is it? Yesterday, tomorrow, I don't know. How many trips you made? Who can count that high? What you hauling this trip? Grub. You? Bazooka ammo. Scotch and soda. <laughs> a man's a comedian. Doc's waving. Get that coffee down. Let's go. The mission was accomplished in just seven days. If anyone had ever held the capabilities of the helicopter in doubt, those doubts were gone when Skyhook 1 was over. If a truck couldn't get through, a plane might. If a plane couldn't, a helicopter would. And in that one fact, there's no telling how many lives have been saved. Bill, uh, how are you and Jim feeling? Oh, we're just raring to go, Captain. Good. Get enough sleep? Plenty. Got a job? Yeah. Remember A Company here? Sure. Battalion called. Said A Company hasn't gotten its mail in about two weeks. They've located it at command, and they want to know if we'd mind taking it up to them. Heck no. Like to play Pony Express for those Joes? Okay. You and Jim hop over to command and pick it up. Right. It's a minor, Lieutenant. Thought you'd be glad to get your mail. Oh, yeah? Yeah, sure, fella. Can't tell you how much. Guys up there would like to pin a medal on you. Well, what's the matter? A patrol got cut off out in front last night. You mean they're out there now? Yeah, they're out there all right. How come they couldn't get back in? Gooks got around behind them. By the time we got rid of them, it was daylight. Now they got them zeroed in with mortar fire. They're holed up in a gully. Well, can't they make it back when it gets dark? Maybe, if they can hold out that long. Are you in contact with them? No. We lost contact a couple of hours ago. How many are there? Well, eight went out. Hmm, this weather doesn't look too good. That's low stuff moving down this way. Yeah, you guys had better clear out before it gets socked in solid. Let's go up to your ML and have a look. What do you got in mind, Bill? What's a helicopter for? Can't we go where no one else can? I'd blast you all over the valley. Not if they couldn't see us. Another five minutes, and that stuff should be sitting on the hills over there. And I always thought fog was the device of the devil. How can you fly in the fog? We don't plan to. When we're sure the Gook's line is socked in, we'll scoot down into the valley and pick your guys up. We'll be back before the stuff can get to us. Well, can your ship carry such a big load? Eight men is We'll empty most of the gas, put it back in when we get back. Well, I guess it's not going to do any good to argue. You realize the gooks will be moving down off the hill in the fog. They want those men, too. Well, let's stop jawing about it and get going. We'll cover you the best we can. Keep her low, buddy. Keep her low. We're going to have to cut this pretty fine. I'll set her down. You get the cargo door open. We don't know what kind of shape there is. Yikes! Somebody spotted us. Fog's moving faster than I thought, too. Gully, just ahead. Hope that lieutenant knew what he was talking about. Keep your eyes... There they are, over to the left. Get that cargo door open. Gee, will you look at the angel? Come on, guys, pile in. I ain't got three that need help. Jim, let's give him a hand. 
He's down, Doc. Never mind that. Get in there quick. On a double, you guys. Easy, easy, Joe. We're getting out of here. Courtesy of heaven. I got him. Get in. Is that all? All accounted for. Well, look, here they come. One of their patrols. Hop on. Leave us head for the hills. I hear you talking. What are you guys bucking for, the medal? On me, it would look good. <laughs> well, it's a nice piece of work, Bill. Guess any time you guys want anything from now on, all you got to do is ask A Company. I wonder if they could get us a five-day pass to Japan. My wife and family are coming in from the States. Well, now, I don't know, but uh, such things have been heard of before. Somewhere, I think. Let's go eat. <laughs> Well, that's our story, but certainly it doesn't end there. For, as Bill Wester will tell you, the helicopter is in a constant state of change and improvement. It's a machine that has become a necessary and vital part of our defenses, and the men who fly them see a bright future ahead. Today, Bill Wester, who is a pilot in the 506 Helicopter Company at Fort Benning, Georgia, is on detached duty at Bridgeport, Connecticut. There, his family with him, he's going to school at United Aircraft, learning, well... Just ask any helicopter pilot what he's learning, and he'll tell you about helicopters, naturally. Proudly we hail Warrant Officer William Wester and his fellow helicopter pilots. Young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many, many others. Yes, indeed. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you later in civilian life, too. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest recruiting station today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.